Hi, my name is Jamie Rudd and I'm a Solution Engineer for HP Aruba Networking and today we're going to look at Pi ClearPass. So the agenda for today, we'll have a look at an overview of what Pi ClearPass is. We will look at the API categories and the API Explorer that exists in ClearPass. We'll look at the modules, the methods, the help and the installation methods for Pi ClearPass. We will look at how to prepare the server for Pi ClearPass and we'll look at getting additional help from the developer hub. We'll look at how to use Pi ClearPass and we'll run a demo. So an overview, what is Pi ClearPass? So Pi ClearPass is a software development kit that has been written in Python and contains all of the API functions that exist within ClearPass. One of the benefits of using Pi ClearPass is that your software engineers or network engineers don't necessarily have to create all of the in individual methods to use the API functions on ClearPass and they don't have to search hard to find all of the API functions as well because they're all built in the Python package. So the APIs are built on the functionality of ClearPass 6.11 it's written in Python, so it's a cross-programming um, language, programming language. So it'll work on any operating system from Linux, Mac, and Windows. The most important thing is, is that you can install Python 3.9.5 or newer. Python's got a small development learning curve. There's lots of content out there to help you. And it is a common programming language within the IT community. And an easy way to program in Python is to use Visual Studio Code. So the available API categories that exist within ClearPass have all been built into Pi ClearPass. And when they're built into Pi ClearPass, they're known as modules. And each of these individual modules, which has been built into Pi ClearPass, contains all of the methods to execute all those particular API functions that now exist in Pi ClearPass. So within the ClearPass, we have something called the API Explorer. And the API Explorer allows you to use those particular API categories and execute particular functions within that particular category. This is quite useful for testing when you've written your code and you just want to see, is the, is the function actually working directly from the server as you expect it to as well? Is there a problem with your code or is it a problem with, you know, what you've input within the code? And it's an easy way to sort of jump onto the server, pick a particular API category you want and then a particular function. And then within that, you can see what parameters are needed to execute that function and whether it executes as you desired it or expected it to. To use this, it's on uh, ClearPass Guest. And once you've created your API client at the top, you just put in the, uh, in the authorization field bearer and then the token. So when you create this API client and you save it, you click on the API client and do generate bearer token. And that is what you paste in at the top there. And then you can go ahead and use all these API functions directly from the ClearPass server. But if you want to use any of these functions outside of ClearPass, then if you're not going to use PyClearPass, for example, then you would have to then go and write all your own code to help you do that. So because we built all the API functions into PyClearPass, and at the beginning we've appended the word API, so just by within Visual Studio Code, by typing API, then it shows you all of the available methods, modules that are available to use within the package. And once, you, once you've chosen a particular module that you want to use, then you'll get a list of all the available methods within that module. And as you can see with the scroll bar, scroll bar on the right hand side, there's a lot of methods that you can use. So when wanting additional help on how to use the particular um, API method, apart from 
looking on the API Explorer, you can actually just write out the code, the, the module uh, module name and the uh, and the function, and then you can just place your cursor over it, for example, on Visual Studio Code, and it'll explain how that particular function should operate as well. So it contains the operation, what the uh, response codes are, what path parameters that are required, which we can look at later on, what body parameters are required as, as well. Also an example of the, the body parameter, which you can just copy and paste into your code because it's formatted the right way for when it needs to be pulled and used in the method. But we can see that later on. So another way of getting help is by using the Python built-in function help and then passing in the module name and the method name. And then the installation methods. So there's four different ways that I've documented on how to install PyClearPass. The easiest method, once you've got Python installed, is just execute pip install PyClearPass and that's it. It's installed. Another method is downloading PyClearPass directly from the GitHub repository and building it using PyClearPass and then installing it. Sorry, building it using Python and then installing it using pip. Another method as well is if you have git installed on your machine, you can just execute pip install git and then plus and the reference path of where PyClearPass is on our repository and it can install directly from the website as well. So preparing the server for PyClearPass, there's two things to do. The first one is optional, which is creating the OAuth API service. It's not required if you're using the client credentials grant type, which is shown on the right hand side. So then the second thing you need to do is create the API client. So once you created the client, you pick the operating mode, you pick the operator profile. You could create your own specific operator profile that only maybe can read the API or can read and write to the API. Pick the client type, which is the easiest one to use is the client credentials. Pick an access token lifetime and press save. Once you created the API client, Later on, you can either use the client secret and the client ID that's shown in the screen there, but the password, the secret isn't shown. You can use that within your login parameters when executing the script, or if you save this, and then you click on the API client, it will show generate bearer token. So yeah, generate bearer token. And if you click that, it will generate an API token. And that's what we can use at a later stage, which I'll show you. That's the easiest method, to be honest. Create the API client, save it, click on the line and generate the, the token. So available help, additional help is available on the developer hub. So we've got a section for Python for uh, how to install. So what is PyClearPass? How to install PyClearPass and using PyClearPass. And there's examples in the using PyClearPass section as well. So understanding the uh, parameters of a method. So we always have to have the login variable within our, um, within our method when we're calling the method. And then sometimes we have a body parameter, which is shown at the bottom for this example of new role. And the way that the code's written is that you are able to copy the body variable from the whole body word to the last squiggly bracket and that contains the keys and the uh, empty values that you can use to execute that particular function so that's just to sort of speed things up for you as, as a developer you can see you know what what information is required in that dictionary object um, and then we also have some path parameters, which are sh which is shown at the top. So for the example, uh, delete authentication source name by name, and it's got the self, which is the login, and then the name equals a string. So if we pass name in equals, and then put in the name of the authentication source we want to delete, then it'll delete. So that is an example of a path parameter. 
and then on the right we got our query parameters as well and that's when we're getting information from the server but we want to provide additional information to query that 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 return data before it's actually returned to us as well so creating the login variable the first thing we do is import the modules from PyClearPass so by executing or adding into your code from PyClearPass install import star so from PyClearPass import star that will pull in all of the available modules then we create our login object there's two methods log uh, option one is to create the login uh, variable we reference the ClearPass API login class and then we pass in the server name the grant type the client secret the client id and then decide whether we want to verify ssl and that's what we looked at in the previous screenshot creating the api client and we've seen the client id and the client secret in there uh, the other option very similar to the above, above but you just specify the server um, name and the api token as well so as it's written we create a login variable we create reference the ClearPass API login class and then the server name we pass in the server name and then the API, API token we pass in the actual token which we have an example of later on in the demo and then whether we want to verify SSL or not so this example shows returning roles from the ClearPass server we've created our variable called roles we've got our API a module we want to use which is API policy elements and then the specific method we want to use to get role we pass in our login variable that we should learned about in the previous screen and then we've got our we've got our parameters now our query parameters which we say in limit 100 so any return maximum of 100 records or results if you don't put a limit as it says only 25 It'll be returned and then once you've executed it the data will be returned it's in JSON format but it's converted into a Python dictionary object but as you can see you've got the data from the, the server but it does look a little bit messy a bit unreadable so if you want to improve the readability of the role that's returned that information same thing that we done earlier we got our roles variable referencing the API policy elements and that specific module passing in the variable of login and the limit but then just a simple for loop looping through the embedded items and printing the role and once we execute that it will be presented nicely on screen if you just want to see for example the name you could do print role and then in square brackets and quotes inside just write the word name and that would just print out the name of all the roles so it's just an example of looping through the the data on the server but also making it in more of a, a readable format so if you want to delete a role for example then you could this prints to the screen and we're referencing the api policy elements and the delete role name by name and then we pass in our login variable and then the name of IoT, the role we want to delete. It doesn't normally say if it's deleted. One thing to be very careful about when using this is it doesn't stop you from deleting it if it's used in a policy. It will just return null in the policy. So it could be quite dangerous because in the GUI there's methods to prevent that deletion of data if it's referenced anywhere else whereas in the using the API doesn't stop you and just a little example here that if you do try this is just for adding a role but if you did try and add a role and then for example it already exists then it's just briefly an example of what that method message would be like on screen if you tried to add a role that already existed but it'd be the opposite way around if you tried to delete a role that didn't exist it would be role does not exist for example but not all api calls always return a response a successful one generally doesn't to be honest so if you want to create a new role for example then we've created our dictionary object role and then we passed in the um the, the name or the key the key name and then 
the key value and then the comma separated it and then passed in some more dictionary parameters so we've got our key the a key called description and then the value of you know role used for iot devices and then we're going to print the output on the screen and then again we're calling the api policy elements we're calling the new role method passing in the login parameter we need and then the body equals the role dictionary object there at the top so this is just the example of using a body parameter basically and if you wanted to create loads then you could you know create a a loop to go through them a better example would be adding a nad for example network access device to the server that there should be a reference of how to do that on um on the developer hub website as well